Dates from day to day. I met my girlfriend. 
was pretty much living on cigarettes, sugar, and my homemade Australian pizzas. But then, as men often do, they feign interest in things to impress a girl. For me, it was healthy eating. I actually cut out refined sugar from my diet to seal the deal. But now sugar is dominating the headline. And there's so much debate and conjecture on the topic that it's hard to know what to believe. But with this little person on the way, I feel like I need some definitive answers. If the average Australian family of four had to buy the sugar they are consuming, they would be going to the supermarket, taking six one kilo bags of sugar off the shelves, six, taking it home, eating it all that week, then going back next week and doing it again. Clearly, the ability to be on a high sugar diet is really new, especially in terms of evolutionary time zone. Sugar has become so prevalent in today's society that if you removed all the items containing it from a standard supermarket's shelves, just 20% of items would remain. Deuteronomy 28 verse 22 because clearly we haven't kept the first part of Deuteronomy 
and that is why we are having, or due to our false education, suffering from the diseases that we do. We can have somebody read for us from Deuteronomy 28, beginning with verse 22. It says, uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee with a consum consummation, and with a fever, and with an infl inflammation, mm -hmm. inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with the blasting, and with the mildew, and the, they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Okay, so this was God who said that if we do not keep uh, the statutes, the laws that he has given us, the health laws and the moral laws, we can expect even diseases to come into our lives. All right? How much of the, how much of the moral law am I supposed to keep? The Ten Commandments. How much of them am I supposed to keep? All. All. Okay. What about the laws of health? How many can I break? None. None. Totally none. Okay? We are supposed to keep all of them by the power and the grace of God that we may be able to escape those things that are listed here. What is consumption? What are some of the diseases that fall under the name consumption? TB. Okay? So that which comes in, that which is in the chest, TB, pneumonia, is part of what? Consumption. <clears throat> All right? And then, if we go down a little further, there are other mentions, burning ague, inflammations, and fevers. Blasting, yeast. Or blight, mildew, things like rust and gangrene, botch, boils. These are all the diseases that are mentioned there. There's leprosy. There's emeralds. What are the emeralds? It's so common in Kenya these days, you would not believe it. What? Mm -hmm. what? Emeralds. What are the emeralds that are mentioned further down there in Deuteronomy 28? Okay? Emeralds are the hemorrhoids, the piles. Okay? It could also be a tumor in the anus canal. We have scab, which is scurvy, itch, which is anything from sunburn, anything that affects your skin and causes you to do what? To, to scratch yourself. Alright? We are also told about madness, astonishment and bewilderment. Do we have a lot of people suffering from bewilderment? We do. People who cannot be told the slightest thing. Now, you know, their heart just inaza katiki hapo, hapo, papo. Because they get so shocked, so fast. Of course, as, a, as people who are in the health message, we know that that is also caused by the use of a lot of caffeine. And we've seen it's also in the water. Right? So, we have been spoken to about friendly bacterias which are in the body and the fact that if we sweep out that which is good within us what will replace it the bad okay there are several strains of candida but i'm going to talk about the one that brings a lot of yeast infection in families because i don't want to say it's only women who suffer everybody suffers as a result of this Okay, where does it where does it uh, live? It's found in the gastrointestinal tract. That means anywhere from the mouth, throat, mucous membranes, 
this is where it will uh, attack or live. But what may cause this candida to thrive above uh, or what is the what causes a good environment for this candida to grow or to overrun the human body? We can say the use of antibiotics. All right. And why is that? What were the first antibiotics made out of? If you remember from your history. Penicillin. Yes, penicillin. Where was it harvested from? Fungus. It was harvested from a mold. A fungus. Okay? And what was that fungus? Somebody left a pumpkin out in the open. Do you, know how bad, uh, do you know how fast pumpkins go bad? Yes. They go bad very fast. So, somebody left a pumpkin that wasn't eaten, and what grew on it? Mold. Then he harvested this mold and made it into a medicine that was called what? Penicillin. Now, if this thing is supposed to give life or to perpetuate life or to help uh, to help your life to improve surely can it grow on something that's dying and be of benefit to you okay question number one so when we use a lot of antibiotics they enter the system and they overrun the system and they take over from that which is good, take the place of the good bacteria within us, and they now begin to thrive on the inside of us. Okay, what else? Cheese. The illusion of what? Of food. Cheese is one of them. Ice cream. Ellen White says anything that combines milk with sugar will cause what? Fermentation. Okay. And fermentation basically means that it blocks out air or oxygen from the system. So sugar is there. Another illusion of food, which is now even being used very highly as medicine, are the fungi themselves, isn't it? Yes. So you find mushrooms have that ability as well. And where do mushrooms grow, by the way? Where do mushrooms grow most? Hmm? On rotting things promote your life can give you health i went to maseno and uh, presented on 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 yeast in the campus there and a young lady came after the talk and she said what you have said i have seen to be true and i said what do you mean she said well not long ago i lost my father and in this part of the country we do not cement graves we lay people in the dust and then we just level. Okay? Keep it at ground level. The most that can be done, they may grow a hedge around the grave to signify that that is where the grave is. But they don't have anything that protrudes. And she said that six months after my father died, my own brother passed away. So he was laid to rest right next to my father. And I can tell you for a fact I saw it with my own eyes. Six months after they had decomposed, the first thing that we saw on those graves were what? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Can that be food? Let's be honest. Can that be food? So it says excellent sources of protein. <laughs> it has fed off what? Dead bodies. <coughs> Okay, 
And it is those same yeasts that are harvested to make what? Bread. Bread. Are we like eliminating everything that's in a super, on a supermarket shelf? Huh? Okay, so the same things are harvested and the prophet says that if, if, if the bread is fresh, it should not be eaten. If it hasn't stayed it's three, four days, it's not to be touched. And she says the best bread is without yeast, small loaves, and thoroughly baked. I had a patient once, I had gone to ask, uh, uh, one lady had called me and asked me to please speak to a relative of hers who had come into Nairobi because she was found with cervical cancer. And so I went through and spoke to her about the things that she may need to leave from her diet as a result of the condition that she had. And when I mentioned mushrooms, she was, she almost fainted. She was in total shock. Because I told her, this, these things may cause your condition. Mm -hmm. And so, you do not want to continue perpetuating the cause by eating that which has brought it about. And she was totally shocked because she said, I live in a part of the country where we border another tribe and that is where we get our mushrooms from. So I can tell you for a fact, I have eaten and eaten and eaten those things. Because that is like meat to us when we cannot afford what? Meat. meat. And it comes and it comes cheap. <clears throat> okay, mold. I advised another young man who had uh, a cancer and we were looking at the causes of his cancer so we went through everything. He said no, no, no to everything. I told him there's only one question I have not asked you and this may be the cause of your leukemia because he had a very uh, leukemia, the one that grow, that, that overruns the system very fast. So I told him, there's only one thing I'm seeing. I want to ask you, because you know he was from an affluent family. So that thing came to my mind and I was like, no, couldn't, that one couldn't have that problem. But I finally asked him and told him, did you once live in a home that had mold growing in it? He's like, what, what mold? I said, like, maybe somewhere was leaking and then the walls were kind of black, like the bathroom was not washed properly. He said, five years of college, I lived in Langata, and I rented a home from a man, and the tank was leaking into my... And I kept telling the landlord, you need to clean what? You need to do something about these leaking pipes of water. And so one time he came, and the, the landlord had just painted over the mold. So he has a young man who comes out of college, he hasn't even stayed three, four years since he graduated. And he's found to have what? Leukemia. Hmm? And what was the cause of that? Mold. These things that look like they're very small. You go into the bathroom, you're seeing some black on the cracks of the what? of the tiles, and you're thinking, ah, this is not so serious. This thing is serious. It is a very serious problem that needs to be cleaned. Okay? So we are told even lactose in milk causes yeast. Alright? So what happens? The mother drinks milk, and then she suckles the, the baby. Alright? Then the next minute, they're looking for somebody who can help them because the child is full of nappy rash and the child is full of what? Sores in the, in the mouth. But I've only been breastfeeding this child. What did you breastfeed this child? See, maziwa yangu too. Hakuna kitu Okay. 
But then what did you eat that has caused yeast in the, in the child? Because this is, the milk is only made out of what the mother ate. Okay? So if the mother eats a lot of mandazis, the child will suffer from yeast infection. Okay? So we have the baking powders and the baking sodas also bring that same problem. So you go into the, to the cities of today, the mother who has a kiosk, whose children when they are hungry are told, go and get two mandazis, <coughs> two mousse from the shop and do what? And eat. Those children, you will always find them with ringworms in the head. Mm -hmm. The ones who own cake factories, it is the... It is, the, it is the, 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 the husband, so the child has ringworms, the mother is having other issues with the fungus in other places, and there, between his what? Tools. Between his toes, athlete's foot. The whole family is in, is having yeast issues. Okay? Right now, if you read into science, they are saying that if you cannot eliminate yeast, yeast is like at the foundation of almost every disease. Okay? I say this because I have a, I have a relative who suffered from lupus. Okay? Still has the condition. And uh, when I spoke to this relative, I said to her that even when you go into the hospital this time, they have to eliminate that yeast. Because the yeast is at the bottom of your lupus condition. And it was not until the lupus was eliminated because she chose to go to the hospital that she began to feel better about what? That condition, coming out of it. So at the foundation of every disease is what? I think my brother has mentioned it. You wipe out your gut system, you're ready for anything. So we have to be extremely careful about that. Okay? So we have said use of antibiotics, use of soda, use of cheese, ice cream, sugar, mold, bread, lactose in milk. Okay? And for ladies, even the use of the, uh, the birth control will predispose ladies to a lot of yeast infections. Okay. So just that pill, which is supposed to be helping your life, actually does the exact opposite. In what other ways do we get or what else causes yeast infections? Now, in Kenya we are having a problem of mercury inside what? Inside sugar. So, anywhere where there is mercury, sugar, of course, itself is a major cause of what? Of yeast. Why? Because it creates an acid environment. What are the greatest acidifiers in what we eat? It's milk. Uh, sorry, it's, we begin with sugar. And then we, begin, we go to? That's it. Eggs. Milk. All right? and the refined flours and grains. All right? So that the person who eats sugar and the person who eats white rice are one and the same thing. They will suffer the same yeast infection. Because white rice, white chapati flour, white uh, ugali flour is the same as eating what? Sugar. It's not different. Because it is refined. The goodness has been removed. Alright? <clears throat> now, those who also have uh, metals in their body. And metals could be anything. You know some people are pierced everywhere. So they have what? Those are metals which are still affecting their their bodies. Others have them in their teeth. 
You go to South Africa, people smile, it's just gold. You flash, 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 gold in their, gold in their teeth. Okay? So it could be the mercury fillings, or they could be the gold fillings, or gold capped teeth. Anything that is metal upon you, even your earrings, even the nose rings, and uh, the, these rings are put anywhere and everywhere these days. What happens when the body comes in contact with metal? It, it does. How? It because this must, uh, the way God created uh, my body, mm. and, the way, and the way the metals, uh, how it was manufactured from the factory, mm. it was not supposed even to contact with the body. That is it. And so when it does through all these things, including those bottle juices, are we together? Including those packet juices, what happens? Your body creates a yeast to block itself from the, from the metal. And so what happens when we have cancer patients in hospital? Oh, my brother, oh, my sister, oh, my church mate is suffering from cancer. Then I go to the supermarket and what do I pull out? Hmm? Packet juices. Then I take it to them. And then in a short while I hear they are so unwell, they are now even... Huh? That is it. And I don't realize I'm the one who has caused that. By doing what? Taking them a high fractose sugar and also... Plus mercury and God then increased the cancer in them. They were coming out of it, now they are even gotten worse. And I will never figure out it's the juices, packet juices that I took. Okay. Also, immunizations cause what? Yeast infection. Why? Because they are heavily laden in mercury. Maybe you're wondering, but mercury and then something like baking powder, what is the difference? Hmm? I go to a church wedding and I eat cake one day and then the next week I'm just suffering from yeast infection. Why? Hmm? What is in baking powder? Baking powder has a lot of aluminium in it. And aluminium is a what? It's a metal. It's a, it's a metal. Okay? If somebody saw you chewing mabati, sat down there and you were chewing mabati, what would they say? This lady is going mad. Okay? But it's the same mabati, the same, the same aluminium I am eating in my baking powder, in my antiacids, okay, when I'm having stomach issues. It's the same aluminium or and other metals, you cannot swallow money or chew money now, or play with money in your mouth, but it's the same metals that are put into the liquid oils to make them stabilize as liquid. So in the presence of those metals, yeast will always exist. Okay? Also, alcohol. Is it hard to know somebody who is an alcoholic just by looking at them? No. You can't fail to note. They usually have very terrible skin conditions. Have you noted that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mashilingis that never go away. Why? Because the alcohol causes. It also, it's also there because of environmental chemicals. Okay, what are some of the environmental chemicals? Our liquid soaps are full of parabens. Okay. And it's what is being used as shampoo. It's what is being used in the, in the homes now. Anybody can learn to make liquid soap. So all of 
these things destroy good bacteria in us and cause the bad bacteria that has been ingested to do what? To multiply. And when that bad bacteria multiplies, it creates room or opens room for any disease to come into the body. Okay? How can you tell that you have a yeast infection? Other than the obvious itching. Okay? Alright? You can tell maybe by the foods that you eat. Okay? There was a time I used to suffer. Every time I ate peanuts, I would have issues. I eat peanuts today, tomorrow, the third day I'm itching. Because aflatoxin can also cause what? Yeast infection. But my problem was because that I did not have enough of the amino acid called lysine. L-Y-S-I-N-E. If you are low on lysine, any arginine product will cause you a problem. Alright? And therefore cause yeast infections in your system. So you can say, oh me, I don't do nuts, I have... No, you might just be lacking the amino acids that helps to do what? To digest the nuts. Okay, so I cured my problem by taking a lot of mabuyu powder, baobab powder. Extremely good for energy and things of that nature. But also it increased the lysine in me. And also, of course, I cleared the... Um, Candida, I'll let you know how. Okay, so other than the obvious itching, person with candida problems or yeast infections will also have impaired liver function. Why? Because the toxins of candida, remember this is a poison or this has brought in poisons. Where are they filtered through? What does the filtering in your body? Yeah. It's the liver. So it goes and impairs the liver and now you end up having a what? A liver problem. Alright. Another thing, and this I found with another young man also, who is a good friend of mine living in a house which also is moldy, but what he had, he had a lot of uh, yeast all over his skin. And uh, unbeknown to us, the, the yeast had spread to you know that the heart is encased in a sack. You get that? So what happened for him, the way the body reacted to the yeast is that the the heart, that sack, ended up filling with water in a bid probably for the body to protect itself from the what? From the yeast that was coming. So you get that, you get, um, I can't remember the medical term for it, but it's water around the heart. And that is a sign of what? Of yeast that needs to be cleared. But of course you have to be able to drain that water first. Okay. <clears throat> so what can we do to be able to clear stubborn yeasts in our bodies? Remember, the reason for the health message is so that we can come to a point where we understand God when he speaks to us. Uh, to be able to exercise our willpower. You know? Say no. Say no. You know? I, I, you, you, we just have to get to that point where we are able to say, you know, I know it's cultural for you to 
to give a visitor something when they come in, but I just don't need that. I'm sorry, it's not offensive. I'm sorry if it looks like it's offensive. But I, those things I just don't, I don't need. Even if I'm going to break your culture, I am sorry, what Christ is giving me is higher than, than your culture. And so I have to say no. I'm sorry. I just... Eh? And you know how it comes. Leo tu, siku moja tu, kidogo, just this little bite. Huh? I remember doing that even on, the, on my own parents' birthday, where there was a, a cake there, and someone put cake in my mouth, and I literally just got it in, went out and spat it. You know, no chewing, like, ah, quickly, they didn't even realize I was gone. Okay? And that was the first time now when I said, this is nonsense. What is this cake doing for me? You get? It may look offensive that I, I'm not happy for the increased years of this parent, but uh, what Christ is giving me is what? Is more. I cannot eat this. I don't eat this. For the glory of, of God. Okay. All right. Secondly, we have said we have to be able to know the right times to eat because you can get yeast infections just by eating a late supper. All right. And I've met some very good uh, church members who say, but, sin but I ate at nine and I stayed up until midnight. And what is the point of that? What does the SOP tell us about how many, uh, what time we should sleep? What is the ideal time for us to be? Okay, so 9.30, three hours before 9.30 is what? Hmm? And some days I have been very, uh, it may seem unkind, but I have, I've gone to places and asked people that, and they tell me that, but I can't close my shop then. That's when most of my customers come. I can't eat supper at that time. And I have had to ask people, when God looks from heaven and looks down on earth, what do you think is the most important and precious thing to him? It's you. Because you are the temple of who? Of God. So we can do two things, okay? And I ask them, oh, uh, so should we like pray the business fails so that you can learn how to take care of God's temple or what should be our prayer? Niombea tu niweza kufunga shiduka, nienda ni. Huh? Like don't pray that prayer. No, I can pray that the job ends so that you can learn to take care of God's temple. Because that cannot be an excuse before God. And if it means the job must end so that you can learn how to keep... We are talking about total reform. My brother talked about what? Is it partial reform? Or is it total reform? Total. Yes. How many health laws did Jesus break? Huh? Okay. Was he was he was he uh, was he uh, watching videos the entire night? No. Is that a law he broke? No. The only time he never slept was when he was praying for our salvation. Those are the days he cashed. Okay, so we have to be very strict about our our eating times as well. We cannot we cannot live here now and then. Around 8 o'clock, now we are eating ugali. Why? You, you'll have yeast infection. Among another whole host of things. But yeast infection will be one of them. Okay? So we need to correct that which we have. And by the way, correcting must be corrected with, with confession. Are we together? Yes. 
I'm not saying today I won't eat and then tomorrow I go to my brother's house and they're eating supper at 8 and then I do what? I eat. Huh? Take a watermelon, drink water and go and sleep. You'll see the food in the morning. Total reform. Okay? So late night suppers, just forget about that. You cannot, we cannot glorify God partially. And we're not going to glorify God through anything else other than these bodies. Okay. So is there, if, if we came into our homes and found somebody had thrown rubbish, that even, even if it's not here in the living room, but somewhere on the compound, you went away to work and a neighbor felt funny and went and, and came and threw rubbish in your compound, how would you feel if you entered there and found rotting rubbish in your compound? Would you be amused? Hmm? And so is the Spirit of God going to occupy a body where food is eaten late huh? and full of yeast infections? Because after all, He loves us. Will He? Alright? So we want to be able to use things that God has created. And God has created these things in what? These things in nature. Alright? What's that? No, that's uh, avocado oil, but I'm saying we are talking about natural things and our medicines are what? God has created. What did God create? What, what came first? Huh? The disease or the cure? The cure. The cure. Because God knew there would be yeast infections, he came and did what? And brought the treatments first. Okay? So for ladies, what can ladies do? Okay? And even gents, because they, it's also called jock itch, isn't it? So you want to take something that is slippery. Okay? And this is one thing that is slippery mulberry leaves I can take my derema as well any okra anything that is what slippery and slimy takes away the itch are we together so I put this in my water warm water in a basin I can put a bit of Himalayan salt but even if I just have this and I have uh, two cloves of garlic and I put my feet in that okay and this is a famous question everywhere we go how many times should I do that how many times how, how often have you drunk uh, other medicines and not cured from that yeah, as in you want to harakisha this process and other things you've drunk never helped you are you getting me? okay so I put this in my basin Okay, three, four, five leaves, chop them up, wash them, chop them up, put in my cloves of garlic, two to three cloves of garlic, put in my uh, four to five liters of warm water, put in a bit of Himalayan salt, which is optional, and I can do what? Put my feet in that, or any other part of me that has what? Has the itch. Okay. The slipperiness is what gets rid of the what? The itchiness. And that you don't even have to do more than three times. You do it tonight, you do it tomorrow morning, you're good to go. Is God good? Mm. He's very good. Okay. Alright, we have other herbs that are helpful, things like chamomile, and these can be drunk even by young children. There are those who use honey and cinnamon together as a drink to get rid of it. We know that those who don't eat enough raw vegetables will always suffer those conditions, isn't it? <clears throat> Especially the cabbage family is very good with that. But we know that the cabbage family is one family that is sprayed highly, isn't it? If you don't grow your own cabbage, I don't know. Huh? So we have to, you, you, God is giving us more and more reasons to, to live. Hmm? 
You are even safe if you see a worm in it. Then you are sure maybe this one is better. This one is better. If the worm can eat it. Hmm? Yeah? Seriously. Okay? You can also put a few drops of what they call tea tree oil. There are some people who sell that, the leaves of tea tree oil. Uh, you can also use diatomaceous earth, diatomaceous, diatomite, which is found uh, in Kenya, very prevalent in the Rift Valley. It's like a white stone powder. I think I can show it to you later. All right? Okay. And most of all, we are doing this to whose glory? God's glory. Hmm? And he is saying he is able to bring, restore health unto us and to heal us of all our wounds, whether they be spiritual, whether they be physical, whether they be mental. All of these things will affect our state of health. And he is powerful and ready to do that for us. Okay? One other thing that is causing a lot of yeast in people, even the one that can uh, from the studies that I have uh, read on the internet, um, something that is very popular with people who don't eat meat, they use something called brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast. They like to include this in all the foods. If you even check out the recipes, add some teaspoons of nutritional yeast. Where is nutritional yeast grown or brewer's yeast grown? It's grown on molasses, isn't it? The same way that we talked about the, the penicillin is the same way that molasses is allowed to go bad and this brewer's yeast is done what? It is harvested from it. And they have said that this one causes a yeast infection that is fatal. And they are finding more and more people in, in uh, America especially because it's very widely used there are suffering from yeast that once they enter the hospitals they cannot leave. It's fatal to them. All right. So together with that I pray that uh, may the Lord prosper us and keep us in what? Keep us in health. To the glory of his name. Amen. Amen. So uh, we'll kneel in the interest of time. We want to serve lunch. I'll ask Brother George to pray with us. Our dear Heavenly Father, great is your faithfulness. When we look back, take stock, and see how we are departed from your blueprint. We only realize, Lord, it's purely because of your love for us that we are the way we are. And as you enlighten us, enable us, and strengthen us in our weaknesses, that we may make a firm decision, Lord, to live the way you want us to live, mm -hmm. to your glory, Lord. Mm -hmm. While we have difficulties in this decision making, Lord, please strengthen. We look unto you, and as we behold you, Lord, we pray that you may be changed. That when you want to inhabit our temples, you find a temple that is ready for you to your glory. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us, Lord, from all our unrighteousness. Is our prayer.